Hi guys, it's Renee. Welcome to this baking video. Today we're going to be making a Mickey Mouse cake. This cake is going to be a small one. It's kind of like uh, personal or just for two. So, okay, the first thing that I do when I work with cakes is work over a tray because it's easier for me because I tend to be a bit messy. But yeah, I'm just going to be working with my cake. And this is my cake. It's a six inch square cake. I had it frozen. I do have a recipe for this one. If you want to check it out, it's my channel. And then I'm going to be using this cake leveler. Sometimes when you work with too frozen or just too hard on the outside cakes, it's hard to work with the cake leveler. So what I do is actually I grab my kitchen knife and first I cut it on between there, not cutting the cake into two pieces, but just towards the middle part. Once you reach the middle, you're just going to leave it like that. And that's when you're going to be working with your cake leveler. And that's actually easy because the cake leveler works best from the inside since the cake is moist. And then I'm just going to remove the top part. This pretty much depends on the recipe that you're working with. If you're working with a flat cake, you really don't have to do this. And this is how the cake looks leveled. As you can see, the corners are not like perfectly straight and I just like to leave it like that if you want to go ahead and just make a perfect square wick so you can do that. And then I'm just going to store my leftovers on a piece of clean pack and I'm just going to probably eat this later or you can use leftovers to make some cake pops as well. Then once I have done that, I'm just going to cut my cake into two halves because I want to have some filling in there. And for the filling, I'm going to be using my whipped cream. You can add some fruits and then I'm just going to use my spoon to just spread my whipped cream all over the cake. And then I'm just going to use my spatula to make sure I have an even distribution throughout the cake. And I'm just going to uh, then place the top part back on. This is like the sandwich part as my niece likes to call it. And then I'm going to be using this cake board. And it's just basically one of those round cake boards that they sell at bakery supply stores. It's better to just use this kind of thing when you're working with cakes. Then I'm going to be working with some wax paper or parchment paper. So what I do is use some tape in order to place my wax or parchment paper on top of my cake board. And this is just so um, for the next step my cake doesn't move. But it's pretty much optional if you want to add like a piece of tape. And then I'm just going to pretty much wrap my wax paper around my cake board. It's just an extra step, I guess I could say, that I like to do when I'm frosting my cake. I'm just going to place my cake on top in there. A lot of people like to frost their cakes using their spatula and going all the way around it, but uh, I prefer to use other techniques rather than this one. Uh, but I'm going to be using this tipless piping bags that I got and I love them. I made a review actually on this one on my channel if you want to check it out. They come handy and they are like disposable. Or you can use Ziplocs as well for this step. The only thing you're going to do is fill your Ziploc bag with uh, your frosting. And then you're going to make a hole in there with your scissors. But in this case, I'm just going to be working with my tipless piping bags. And I'm just going to fill my bag with my whipped cream. Once my bag is as full as I want it to be, I'm just going to close it with a knot. And then I'm just going to make a hole with my scissors so I can actually use it. This is what I do when I want to frost my cakes and I want an even kind of coat. I find it easier and I guess I find that I get an even coat using this method, just going all the way around with my whipped cream. And as you can see, my frosting or my whipped cream was a bit tiny, a bit too dry. Next time, I'm definitely going to be adding some water because I felt like it was like a bit too stiff and I just liked it to be a bit more smooth, but it works anyways. And I'm just going to cover the whole cake with my frosting. I'm just going to take my spatula again. I'm just going to dip it in some water so it's kind of not wet, but has some water in it. And I'm just going to uh, smooth the whole thing and I use water because it makes it smoother. That's the difference when you use water and when you don't use water. When you don't use water, it looks like kind of, you can see all the bubbles in there. And when you use water, it's like um, the top is smoother. So once I'm done, I'm not going to go like super perfect with it because that's not what I want for this cake. But if you want to, you can always like take your time and just make it super perfect. I'm just going to take a Mickey Mouse cookie cutter and I'm just going to pretty much place it in there. It's like my base for my shape. 
Then I'm just going to take some whipped cream and I'm just going to color it with some black food coloring. Make sure you're using gel food coloring because if you use one of those liquid uh, food colorings, it's going to change the consistency of your whipping cream. And unless that's what you're going for, it's going to be too liquid, too loose. And I'm just going to take another one of those bags that I love and I'm just going to make a hole in there and I'm going to trace the Mickey Mouse shape that I just did, just around the edges. <laughs> And then I'm going to fill my Mickey Mouse shape with this zigzag uh, motion thing. And this is just so I have like even amount of frosting all over my Mickey Mouse face. Once I'm done with that, I'm just going to be pretty much doing the same thing with the water and my spatula. You can use a kitchen knife as well for this, doesn't really matter. And then I'm just going to be working on the border of my cake. Now, to be honest, I was going to do something else, but... For some reason, I ended up doing this one. It's not my fave borders that I've done, but it's the one that I just ended up using. Then I'm going to be adding my stripes. For that, I'm going to first add some lines going from the bottom of the cake towards the top on the edges. And then I'm just going to fill those lines in, every other line. Doing this in a zigzag motion with my spatula, which happens to be a smaller one, this one. But again, you can use a kitchen knife as well. I'm just going to fill the whole thing in, just like so. Then I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut my parchment paper or wax paper. I'm just going to place it on my plate, which is prettier. In my opinion, plating is just as important as the cake itself. It's going to make such a huge difference. Then as a final step, I'm just adding some sprinkles because I felt like it was missing something. But I'm just going to add my sprinkles on the corners. And then that's pretty much how this cake looks like. It's not like super, super professional, I have to say. But I had so much fun doing this and I think it looks fun anyways. Uh, so I just wanted to share this idea. Maybe you like it too. And this is what the cake looks like from the inside. Now looking back at it, I just wish I would have done two layers instead of one for my next cake. It's going to be like that. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to share. The cake itself is really good as well. My favorite part was the Mickey Mouse face. So hopefully you like this idea. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more stuff and share it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys, happy baking!